Welcome back to Escapement and Watch. Falling Titan here. Today we're looking at the Intramatic Chronograph. It is a beautiful Panda by Compax, powered by the ETA 7753, also known as the Valjoux 7753. <laughs> that sounds like a sauce. What sounds like a sauce? Valjoux. Sounds like a sauce. Let's see, let me pretend I'm at a, a fancy restaurant, the keg. Uh, yeah, I'll have the top sirloin. And can I get a little Valjoux on the side? Yes, it does sound like a sauce. <laughs> Let's check it out. Let's start off by thanking Kavar Jewelers for lending it in to the channel. Now, if you want this exact watch, email me in the description below and I'll send you a discount code and this one can be yours. Now let's get into it. Introducing the American classic, the Hamilton Panda by Compax Intramatic Chronograph. And it has a huge serial number, I'm not gonna say it. And there it is, what a stunner. It has that beautiful high contrast white and black that's where the panda nickname comes from. And man, is it gorgeous. Now, the history. We're going to talk about the history and the movement kind of at the same time because they go one, they go uh, hand in hand. This movement is called the H31 from Hamilton. 60 hour power reserve, 27 joules, 288 VPH. So a little bit beefed up from the base ETA 7753, the Valjoux. Now that is a famous movement. So in 1967, Project 99, which is a team of four, uh, Hamilton, Breitling, Hoyer, and Dubuis, they patented uh, their chronograph, all right? But they announced it to the world in 69 of March. All right, so they were not the world's first automatic chronograph because there are serial numbers and receipts showing that the Seiko 5 6139 speed timer was on sale January 1969. And uh, there are some receipts in February as well. So Seiko got to market first and therefore has the world's first automatic chronograph. And Seiko's is not just the world's first automatic chronograph. It's the world's first automatic chronograph with a column wheel and vertical clutch. Now this watch doesn't have a column wheel. It has a cam and lever system. So when you engage, you still get that nice mechanical feel. A little bit less tactile and crisp at the very end, at the, at the end of it. And I couldn't find out if this one had a vertical clutch or a horizontal clutch. I just couldn't find it and I can't see it from the case back because it's not clear. If it was clear, I could definitely see it. But I'm assuming it has horizontal because usually companies say when they have vertical. Vertical is better because the teeth are always engaged and it just moves down a bit. And then in the other one that's already engaged, takes over. So horizontal is two wheels uh, with teeth clashing to engage. So you're going to get wear, you're going to get tear, and you're going to get stutter if they're not on the right angle. And you might lose a second or two on your chronograph, which you don't want to. <laughs> Obviously, when you're timing something important, uh, let's say landing on the moon, you need to not lose that second. So guys, let me know in the comments, does this one have a vertical clutch or a horizontal clutch? I'm curious. Just by playing around with it, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess horizontal. It's really well made, really high quality. It's hard to tell for me. If I can't see it, I probably won't be able to tell. And I don't want to try to make it stutter. I don't want to break it. So it's a new watch and it's not my watch. So I'm just being very gentle with it. All right. So that's the movement and the history. Let's do the measurements. I got 40 millimeters in diameter. And I also got a pretty thick 14.8 millimeter thick. Now it has that 
Slight domed sapphire. So that is adding to the bulk, but it is a thick piece. And the most important, the lug to lug 49.3. So a pretty long wingspan as well. This watch has 100 meters of water resist with a screw down crown, and it is signed with that vintage H from Hamilton. I love that vintage H. It's also uh, on the center of the dial. Let me move the chronograph hand, you guys can see it. Much better than the modern, that flat H they use. This one should be on all Hamiltons. Now, the strap it comes with is leather and it feels pretty good. The case back has a cool uh, pattern that looks like it's going down into the abyss. It's just a bunch of Hamilton H's in concentric circles and they are shrinking and it looks like you're falling down. <laughs> it's very cool. There you can see the specs, Swiss made, 100 meters, all the good stuff, and the serial. Now, the dial in hands. This is that bi compacts, meaning two sub dials. I love the bi compacts look. It's just pure cleanness and symmetry, and I love it. I love that the date window is at the bottom between the two sub dials. Some people asking for a black date window, which is understandable. It, would, it might help with the panda theme even more so, but I don't mind it being in white. What do you guys think? The hands are high polish, hour and minute, but the sub dials hands are white off those black sub dials. So good contrast and legibility. And the chronograph hand is black. So even more legibility on that white dial, that white creamy dial, beautiful. At three o'clock, that's your 30 minute timer, that sub dial. And at nine o'clock, it is the seconds hand. Your watch is normally ticking seconds hand. So instead of a big, long ticking seconds hand, you have that small one there. Just to know your watch is alive. The big one in the center is the chronograph hand. All right, this is so cool. I gotta have a chronograph in the collection. This is a strong contender. It is a beauty. All right, guys. Now, the price, $21.95 USD, so 2,200 basically. It is an expensive piece, about 2,800 Canadian. So a little bit more there, um, but it is worth it, you're getting history, you're getting one of the world's first automatic chronographs, and uh, you're getting it from a storied brand like Hamilton. I'm a fan of this watch, as you can tell. It is a little bit thick, but we're gonna see it on the wrist and uh, judge for ourselves. All right, guys, what do you think? This thing looks beautiful. It's just classy and elegant, but has a sporty vibe. I'm a fan of it. This thing will look good on any wrist. Now let's check out the height, the thing we're all afraid of. So yes, definitely sits a bit tall, but remember this strap is not broken in, so it's kind of lifting it up a bit. Once it breaks, breaks in a bit, it will not give it so much height. See how it's like high on the right there, right there? Yeah. So strap is just too new, gonna be about a month to break in. All right, now, before we do the weight, since we're talking about these tags, there's a cool little thing in this. The movement cannot be quick set date. Uh, you have to use this little tool that they supply in the pouch. So the only way the date changes is every 24 hours at 12. But if you need to quick set it, they give you a Hamilton Modern H uh, with a little pick. Now you can use a toothpick you can use a pen, but right there, there's a little dimple. And as you can see, the date will change. Ready? I'm gonna push into the dimple. So it's at 15. There, it's 16 now. Okay, let's check the weight. The tags are being weighed. Okay. 
90 grams, so ultra lightweight and comfortable, no worries, all day wear, 100%. Let's check it out on the time grapher, guys. Okay, guys, this one has a different angle of attack, 49 degrees. All right, here we go. Let's check it out. Oh my God, doing amazing. 200, sorry, yeah, 289 amplitude, zero beat error, and negative one, negative two, and now negative three. So pretty accurate. Negative three, we are stabilizing. Negative three, all right, so beautiful movement, no snowflakes or noise, and a strong amplitude, very nice. Well done, Hamilton, 100% they regulate these. You wanna wait a little bit longer just to see if there's any variations. Nope, negative three across the board. Okay, let's check the loom. All right, there is the loom. Not the strongest, but there is a light in the background. But just for a frame of reference, I have my Willard on. That's been under the lights a little bit less. However, this is a dive watch. This is a chronograph. So let's be thankful there is loom at all. Tiny loom plots on the edges of the indices. Those beautiful applied faceted indices. Nice. So there it is in some half lighting. This thing is stunning and a very good value proposition for an entry luxury uh, chronograph with history. Uh, home run, I'm a fan of it. This watch is excellent. Now, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>